I'm here at the moment at my parents' house for Christmas and in the loft there's this bag of wool, knitting wool, as well as a couple of finished sleeves that I think my mum made years ago but it never got finished into a jumper so there's definitely enough wool here to make a decent jumper. Unfortunately even though these sleeves are finished I don't have the pattern anymore that was being used, so I will probably unravel them and then re-knit the wool into a different jumper. So I'm not an expert knitter at all. I can just about remember how to knit. Uh, this is gonna have to be a very simple jumper design. Although this seems like a lot of work, this wool is really good quality and there was lots of it. It would have been expensive to buy new, so I didn't mind spending time to save money and to make use of this tweed yarn. I found a free knitting pattern online that I thought would be a good first project. I'm back at the farm now. I came back yesterday after visiting my parents and spending Christmas with them and my brother and that was really nice. My knitting project is going quite well I think. I'm nearly done. This bit that I'm knitting now is the last piece. It's the second sleeve. So when I finish this I can think about stitching it all together. I still have no idea what it's going to look like when it's done. I've actually really been enjoying doing the knitting though. It's taken a long time, like it's taken hours and hours of work. It's quite slow, but it's also very relaxing and it's just a nice way to spend time. I think over Christmas it kind of gave me something to do other than scrolling through my phone. Another good thing is that we've now passed the solstice, the winter solstice, which is the longest night of the year. And so now it means the days are getting longer and the nights are getting shorter. I do find winter quite difficult because it's so dark and there's not that much time to do things outside and I feel like as someone who really likes to be outside a lot it can be quite hard. I'm really looking forward to spring now because my art studio is finished and I've got lots of ideas and projects to do this spring so I'm really looking forward to it. So the pieces of my jumper are now finished. The next thing is to put the pieces together and I need to knit the collar onto it as well. So I'm gonna have a go at that and see, see how it goes. Knitting the collar was a bit fiddly, but not actually as hard as I thought. I stitched the pieces together and it actually looks like a jumper. It did turn out a bit wider than I wanted, especially around the shoulders, 
but I'm still happy with it as a first attempt. I attended a conference for regenerative agriculture called the Oxford Real Farming Conference. It was very busy and full on, so here we go. The conference is focused on ways of farming that are more beneficial for biodiversity and the environment. There are all sorts of talks and interesting sessions. I am thinking about the future of our farm and what we should do with the land to make the most positive impact. Farming, agriculture, environment, ecology, all these new ideas that we are here gathered to celebrate because we are all farmers, growers, gardeners. We are soil. Our body is soil transformed. I was really excited to attend a talk about mushroom growing. There were some grow bags with oyster, lion's mane and reishi mushrooms, as well as petri dishes with mycelium cultures growing on agar. I stayed with family nearby and commuted to Oxford by train both days of the conference. After the sheep shearing and wool spinning I did last year, I was interested to attend a talk about wool production and processing. And wool, if it's farmed without agro-industrial processes and processed without agro-industrial chemicals, is really truly circular material. Here designers wanting that and farmers wanting to sell it, but actually not knowing how to bridge that gap. And then the main body of the guide is divided into three sections, farming, processing, and designing. I thought we've got all these breeds, 62 pure breeds, it's British wool. Um, so my research, I knitted them all. Doing that, I was just so excited. I just thought we've got all of this resource here. We've got these, all the color palette. This talk was really inspiring and made me want to do some more spinning and maybe knitting with the wool I got from the sheep shearing. The talk focused on small scale wool farming and processing and how farmers and designers can connect to offer more sustainable wool products. The ability for us to reach people with the story of what's happening on the farms that we work with, to share pictures of the crops growing, to explain the cleaning and harvesting process, uh, to excite people about being involved in this new system where they could participate in a change process. I also went to a wool skills workshop to demonstrate some hand spinning using my homemade drop spindle. There was a spinning wheel and a carding machine for combing the wool fibres in the same direction, ready for spinning. I couldn't resist asking to have a go at the spinning wheel and Beck Briar showed me what to do. The hard thing is synchronising your movements you need to operate the wheel with a foot pedal at the same time as drawing out the wool with your hands, called drafting. I had a go and it seemed promising, but I will need a lot more practice as well as my own spinning wheel. Beck was an amazing teacher. She runs workshops in spinning at her farm in Devon. It's called the Woven Briar. I wore my homemade jumper for the second day of the conference on my way home, I came across a Montezuma's chocolate shop.
Before heading home to the farm, I explored some of the local villages near where I was staying with family. There were some cute shops and old buildings. At a greengrocer's, I found my absolute favourite fruit, pomelo, and I had to buy one, even though it was unfortunately wrapped in a lot of plastic. They also had a huge tin of the best olives in the world, but it was so heavy and I couldn't carry it home. One of the shops was in a really old building, with lots of the timber frame visible. There was an apotropaic mark on the fireplace. These were made mainly in the 16th and 17th centuries, and they were supposed to protect the house against witches and evil spirits. The floorboards upstairs were really wide, and I think this is a sign of age. These very wide boards are usually very old. Back at the farm, I was really craving some refreshing food after all the Christmas winter food. I made some hummus using black-eyed beans instead of chickpeas and roasted some butternut squash. Even though it's still pretty cold and warm weather is a way off, eating a salad reminds me that there will be hot days and vibrant, fresh vegetables to enjoy in the not too distant future. I also cut up the pomelo. This fruit is related to grapefruit and has a very thick pith around the flesh, but it is delicious and tastes more mild and less sharp than grapefruit. It also is really nice to pull the giant citrus segments out of the fruit. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I think next week I will get out the wool that I have left from the sheep shearing and try and do some more spinning and maybe knitting. <laughs>